Hello, I'm Dr. Lee Ching Chu, rheumatologist from Singapore General Hospital. This tutorial will review the topic of gout in the following areas epidemiology, pathophysiology, diagnosis, management, ending off with a summary of key messages and references. Gout occurs predominantly in men, but also in postmenopausal women. It is uncommon in premenopausal women because of the protective effect of estrogens. Prevalence of gout rises with advancing age. Although gout is five times more common in males than premenopausal females, after the age of 60, the incidence of women approaches the rate in men. Predisposing factors for developing gout are genetic factors, metabolic syndrome, renal impairment or reduced renal function, drugs which reduce renal excretion of serum urate, for example, loop or thiazide diuretics, aspirin and cyclosporin, and of course, a high purine diet. Serum urate is the end product of the metabolism of purine via the enzyme xanthine oxidase. Excess serum urate is two-thirds renally excreted and one-third GI elimination. Humans lack the enzyme uricase which converts serum urate to the highly soluble compound allantoin. 90% of gout is due to under-excretion of urate and 10% due to overproduction of urate from endogenous causes or exogenous dietary load. Only approximately one-third of daily urate production is externally derived from food. Gout results from elevated serum uric acid, causing deposition of monosodium urate crystals within joints. Tissue uric acid triggers and maintains the inflammatory response within the joints. Urate stimulates the NLRP3 inflammasomes, thus stimulating the production of pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines, which leads to joint inflammation and pain. Now, the gold standard for diagnosing gout is to evaluate the joint synovial fluid using a polarized microscopy. Urate crystals are negatively birefringent, appearing bright yellow parallel to the beam of light. There are four clinical stages of gout. Number one, asymptomatic hyperuricemia with elevated serum urate without any clinical manifestations. Number two, acute intermittent gout whereby there is acute inflammation of joints. Number three, intercritical gout during which the patient is asymptomatic in between flares. And finally, there is advanced gout which may give rise to complications such as chronic tophaceous gout, urate nephropathy, and bone erosions. Bone erosions in gout may be due to MSUM crystal deposition or pressure effect from expanding tophi. What is a typical clinical presentation in acute gout like? Gout can involve any joints with predilection for the first metatarsal phalangeal joint known as pedagra in more than 50% of first attacks. Other commonly affected joints include metatarsals, midfoot, ankles, heels and knees. Tags are usually monoarticular or oligoarticular, but 20% may be polyarticular. The arthritis is often acute in onset occurring during night or early morning, with pain maximal at onset. Inflammation in gout tends to extend beyond the joint, affecting cutaneous and periarticular structures leading to tenosynovitis or soft tissue swelling. An important differential diagnosis is infection. Systemic symptoms such as low-grade fever, chills, malaise may occur in gout. Treatment in acute gout should be initiated within 24 hours of the onset of the acute attack. Pharmacologic therapy for acute gout include non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, COX-2 inhibitors, colchicine or corticosteroids. The rule of thumb is to consider monotherapy for mild to moderate attacks and combination therapies for severe or polyarticular attacks. NZ or COX-2 inhibitors must be used with caution in patients with renal disease. Colchicine works best when started early, within less than 36 hours of onset of the acute gout attack. Colchicine is useful for both prophylaxis and acute flares. Do note that colchicine toxicity may result in neuromyopathy and bone marrow suppression. Colchicine is contraindicated in severe renal and hepatic disease. 
Corticosteroids in the form of oral prednisolone or intraticular steroids are useful if NZ or colchicine are contraindicated or ineffective. In the management of chronic gout, the indications for using chronic urate-lowering therapy are tophaceous gout, recurrent attacks of more than two per year, urate nephropathy with stage 2 or worse chronic kidney disease, and a history of nephrolithiasis. The first-line urate-lowering therapy is xanthine oxidase inhibitors such as allopurinol. Fabuzostat is an alternative if allopurinol is contraindicated. However, if xanthine oxidase inhibitors are contraindicated due to allergy or intolerance, alternative first-line treatment are uricose uric agents such as probenicid or bensbromerone. Allopurinol is a purine analogue and a non-specific competitive inhibitor of xanthine oxidase. It is well tolerated, common side effects being minor skin rash and gastrointestinal events. An important but rare adverse reaction is the allopurinol hypersensitivity syndrome, which carries a high mortality. When starting allopurinol, it is recommended to start at low dose and increase the dose by titration to effect. Fabuzosat is a specific xanthine oxidase inhibitor, which can be considered in patients intolerant or allergic to allopurinol. Bear in mind, this drug must be used with caution in NYHA class 3 or worse heart failure, hepatic failure and renal impairment. Another class of urate-lowering therapy is the uricose uric agent. Examples of these include probenicid and bensbromerone. Probenicid works by inhibiting urate reabsorption from the proximal renal tubules, thereby increasing excretion. However, it is not very effective for most patients as it is only useful for patients who have normal renal function and who are under excretus. When using these agents, adequate fluid intake and alkalization of urine is recommended to avoid formation of kidney stones. Bensbromerone is a useful alternative uricose uric agent. It inhibits urate reabsorption from the distal tubules, thereby promoting excretion. It is contraindicated in hepatic impairment, severe renal impairment, and nephrolithiasis. Rare but serious adverse reactions include hepatotoxicity and immune hypersensitivity reactions. We now discuss the other important considerations in gout management. Firstly, use concomitant colchicine as prophylaxis against acute flare during initiation of urate-lowering therapy. Secondly, treat to target to prevent joint and kidney damage and to reduce cardiovascular risks. The target serum urate is less than 6 mg per deciliter and less than 5 mg per deciliter in tophaceous gout. Thirdly, remember gout is associated with comorbidities including metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. This should be optimally managed by the physician. Fourthly, patient education is important, including advice on low purine diet. Finally, we have some take-home messages. Definitive diagnosis is through joint aspiration and demonstration of negatively birefringent uric crystals on polarized microscopy. In treating to target, Aim to lower serum uric acid to less than 6 mg per deciliter or less than 0.36 millimoles per litre. Use urate lowering therapy such as xanthine oxidase inhibitors and uricose uric agents if clinically indicated. Such treatment should not be stopped during an acute attack. Remember, normal serum urate can be found in up to 49% of patients during an acute flare and consider infection as a differential diagnosis in patients presenting with monoarticular arthritis. These are the key references used in this talk.
Thank you for your attention and have a good day.